Greetings, everyone. I am Dr. Wolf, and I just saw a rock hoof and a hard place. And yeah, this story actually caught me a little off guard. Going into it, I was really excited to see that they were giving a little more focus on some of the pillars, because before now we've only had maybe one episode that was only sort of focused on Star Swirl, even though it was much more a story about, uh, hey, Twilight and the Flim Flam Brothers. I honestly think that there are a lot of stories you can get out of the six pillars trying to fit in with modern society. But I don't know. As the story went on, and I heard from Fluttershy saying that all of the rest of the pillars are fitting in perfectly fine, I admit I felt my heart sink a little bit. It's almost as if, are they kind of wasting all that potential just by saying that, oh no, all the other pillars have pretty much no problem. They're fitting in perfectly fine. It's only Rockhoof that's having issues here. He's the only one with the struggle. Are you really going to waste that much potential? I didn't know if that was really the best place to take this kind of story if they were going to focus entirely on Rockhoof being the only one with the problem. But as the story went on, and I realized everything that they were doing with it, you know what? This actually works out way better when you have all of the rest of the pillars fitting in in their own way, in very different ways, and Rockhoof being the one left out. The story is so much more effective that way. But getting back to the beginning, going back to his homeland and even trying to help with the archaeological dig, and, yeah, I can't help but remember a line like, It belongs in a museum! <laughs> but, understandably, it's kind of hard for us to look at, say, everyday objects that we think are kind of mundane, that a thousand years from now would be considered priceless. Which, again, it's good to see little cameo from Indiana Jones' pony in the background, because those lines from Raiders of the Lost Ark really fit here. Buried in the sand for a thousand years, it becomes priceless. <laughs> but bringing Rockhoof over to Twilight School to become a teacher, it seemed like a fairly good fit at first, until he's a little more destructive than ponies would like him to be, and giving him a small chance to show how heroic he can be by putting out a fire that turns out to be, oh, it's no big problem to begin with. You're misinterpreting things and trying to give him various jobs around town where, again, his strength is more of a problem than a solution. Although I think the best joke of this entire episode has to be with uh, <laughs> bulk biceps and his scream. <laughs> They've turned him into entirely a joke character, but every time he shows up, I can't help but chuckle even if it was for just those few seconds. <laughs> but again, I very, very much appreciate what they did with the rest of the pillars, where with Flash, he was able to fit right in doing what he did more than a thousand years ago. And Mistmane, she was able to take her talents that she had built up and use them in something a little bit different with crystals. Hey. That fits rather nicely. Somnambula, becoming a motivational speaker. Again, something that you wouldn't expect, but she was able to completely take her talent pool and use it in an entirely new fashion. I think the best representation here is actually for Mage Meadowbrook, because unlike Rockhoof, she was able to go right back home and get right back to what she was doing before all of this happened. And you begin to really feel for Rockhoof here. Everything that he ever knew is gone, except for these other pillars that came with him. And yet, trying to visit each of these other pillars and seeing them fit in with modern society in all these different ways, you can't help but feel sorry for him. And, there is one line in particular that really, really got to me. And if they built up this story just for this one line to teach this one lesson, 
I'd say that it is absolutely worthwhile. I want to be remembered as the hero I was, not as the disappointment I've become. And yeah, that really hit me. Mm. It made me realize that it was less about not feeling needed, even though that is part of what they were going for here, but much more because you know that your best self has already come and gone. You've already given as much as you could give long ago. You've already had the greatest glory days. And coming to accept that you're never going to be able to fulfill your greatest talents ever again, that's harsh. That's really, really harsh. I love when a show like My Little Pony can present lessons that are easily understood by children, and yet this is obviously not the target audience for that kind of lesson. This is much more for adults who are feeling past their prime, or who wonder what will happen when they get past their prime, who think back to days when they might have hit the best that they ever could be, and wondering, is that it? Will I ever be able to do my best ever again? That's really intriguing that a show like My Little Pony can tackle that kind of lesson and do it so effectively. Because, again, if Rock Hoof was only trying to fit in with modern society by trying to, say, teach a class or give a massage or try to fetch a tree for Zakora, it wouldn't have been anywhere near as effective. Not even close. By adding the pillars into this story and showing that each one of them in turn has found their own way of fitting in with society and not in the same ways because, again, much more effective that way, you really feel for what Rockhoof is going through. And I love especially how it all comes to an end. Because in the beginning, you have the student six who are really appreciating the kind of stories that Rockhoof is telling. Yona in particular, <laughs> feeling a little left out when she first came to the school, and I had no idea that Yona and Rockhoof would actually relate to each other as well as they have, but now that I've seen it, I wish they could have done this a lot sooner because it's a little adorable. <laughs> it's adorable to see Yona find such a deep connection with one of her teachers and want to learn so much more, feeling inspired to be more than she could be from a pony. She's only really looked up to yaks with these glowing eyes before. And so yeah, that's a really good step for her character and yeah, I like the fact that Rockhoof found a place in the world not by recapturing his best self from long ago, but understanding that it's no longer about him. Instead, it's about inspiring the next generation. Now, everyone is going to have to come to that point in their lives eventually. Everyone is going to say to themselves, I can be better. I can be greater. I can push myself even more. And for a long time, that is true. You can build upon your talents. You can reach more opportunities. More and more doors can open to you if you just keep looking for them. But it doesn't last forever. In the case of someone like Rockhoof, when you do reach that point where you realize you are past your prime, where you can't do what you've loved for so long, what you feel that you've been best at, whether it is being a hero, or whether using your great strength, or even just being with the friends that you developed that close bond with so long ago. Sometimes your purpose isn't just about you anymore but inspiring the little ones. That is a wonderful, wonderful message. And one more thing that I actually appreciate that this episode set up early on, that I didn't know was a setup until, oh, oh goodness, was actually the story about how 
the royal sisters had turned discord into stone. I mean, when you first hear that, you think, oh, they're just giving a little continuity reference. Just a little nod to previous stories. No. This was actually something Rockhoof would consider because, again, I want to be remembered for the hero I was, not for the disappointment I've become. How many people reach a point in their lives where they just want to hide themselves away from the world because they've become, or at least they feel like they've become so much of a failure and they just want people to remember them when they were at their best, refusing to take part in anything anymore. Like in Rockhoof's case, he wanted to become a statue, whether it be some celebrity, a war veteran, I'm sure that there are countless examples of people who just feel that they've gotten past their prime and just can't let go of that, and just can't stand the idea of letting anyone else see what they are now, preferring instead to let the rest of the world remember them for who they were long ago. And you can do so. The episode ends with Rockhoof telling stories. Even if they are tall tales, he is telling stories about long past, when he was a great hero. But he is allowing the children to see him as he is now, as well. He isn't hiding himself away from the world. And that's pretty poignant. That's pretty deep. It isn't often that I get an episode of MLP that really cuts into me this much, but yeah. A rock hoof and a hard place is one of those stories. And to be honest, even if it isn't all that funny, it isn't filled with that many character moments, it's this great setup for a story and a fantastic lesson that's going to make it so much more memorable for me. But what do you think? Given all the potential that they had set up for the many pillars in season seven, do you think this is a good way to continue their story. Do you have any personal stories, or perhaps any one that you know, that reminded you of what Rockhoof went through? Let me know, because as always, I am Dr. Wolf, and I look forward to hearing from you.